Good Lord. Happy Sabbath. And happy Sabbath. And welcome everyone to the Bible Christians of God. Welcome to the Bible Christians of God. We are continuing in our Save and Salvation series. And today we are on the third stage of salvation. The third stage. And the first stage, just to reiterate, is getting saved, period. From religion, from religion of the world, getting saved from your past sins, coming redeemed. The second stage is the discipleship, it's the cleansing, it's the learning, it's the going from milk of the word to the meat of the word. It is studying, and we're going to actually just a little bit of that. But today is the third stage of salvation. And believe you me, y'all, each stage is equally important. Equally. The first stage is just as important as the second stage and just as important as the third stage because today's lesson, we're going to show you that the third stage is the stage of accountability. Mm. It is the stage to which you are given the knowledge of giving the knowledge of salvation, converting souls, ministering to the lost. Raising up the youth and the young and the babies. Mm. It is very serious business at the third stage of salvation that we understand that we are saved. That's why I have this shirt on. Make sure you clearly see. How can I save someone else if I haven't been saved myself? Mm. I got to know what people are saved from. Because what? I myself am a partaker of that requirement. Now, uh, let me just go and take this down because I want people to clearly see this. Because it's important, this third stage is just as important as the last stage. All four stages are critical, y'all, to salvation. And we're going to get this started by understanding that this new life, being a new creature, living this born again life, living the converted life, Living the translated life, when you get hit, when you hit that water and did your baptism, guess what, y'all? We're gonna find out that the Lord gave us three years, three and a half years. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you where I get this from by going to Luke 13, chapter, and verse 1. Because this is a grace period that we are saved by. We're gonna go to Luke 13 and verse 1. Three years to get to the stage of accountability, y'all. And let me give you an analogy, just like a newborn baby. How long you think the newborn baby gonna stay on Similac? How long you think that little child gonna stay in that walker? How long you think, you think I can still feed my 18-year-old son? Almost 18. Think I can sit up there and put a uh, baby food in front of him? Hmm? How long you think he's gonna be able to get that little five-year-old uh, kids meal at McDonald's. Hmm? When you go to the restaurant, they go, how long they gonna be sitting at the kids menu? How long you think that's going Well, it's in the same way in the spirit. Amen. Accountability. Lord will hold us accountable. After three years, you won't be held accountable. Because you got three years. Three years, y'all, to learn about Jesus. Three years to understand the things that entail salvation. And once you reach that slave stage of accountability, which is the third stage, now you, and you would know. You would know how to handle this. And we're going to deal with this. But look, here's the three-year premise here. Here's what the foundation is based on. Luke 13 and verse 1. Luke 13 and uh, start that verse one. Do thirteen. Let's show them that. Do thirteen. And verse one. Read. There were present at that that season some that told him of the Galileans who blood. Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Mm -hmm. And Jesus answered, 
And Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans, mm -hmm. because they suffered such things. He said, Suppose it, they were they suffered this because they were above all Galileans, that they suffered such things. Go ahead. Verse three, I tell you nay, but he said ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Yes, sir. Or those eighteen upon whom the tower in Siloam fell and slew them, think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? See, notice how Jesus is bringing the situation up about repentance, which is what we're about bringing about repentance to everyone's life. The book tells us that the Lord will have all men to be saved. To come to the knowledge of the truth. Mm -hmm. Okay? So he bringing situations to them. He said well, that to think that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem. Go ahead. Verse 5. I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Uh huh. He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. Uh huh. And he came and sought fruit thereon. Uh huh. And found none. Uh huh. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Oh, these three years I come seeking fruit on it, on this fig tree. See, no, he said, these three years I come seeking what? Fruit on this tree. Mm. That's what the Lord want to look up for on you. As you've been baptized, he's looking for the fruits of the spirit. Amen. Is that growing on you? So he gave you three years of study. Three years of this new life. Three years of the kingdom life. Whereby we serve God with acceptably with reverence and godly fear. That's what stage two is about. You learn and you get all in it. All the three years, you all into that. So he's looking for this fruit. Go ahead. I come to get fruit on this fig tree. Yes, sir. Find none. Uh oh. Cut it down. Mm. White cumber it. The ground. Uh huh. Oh, he said, cut it down after three years, huh? Go ahead. And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, mm -hmm. till I shall dig about it and uh -huh. dung it. Uh huh. And if it bear fruit, well, if and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. Uh huh. Verse verse ten. No, oh, yeah, verse nine. Right. If it bear what fruit, well, and if not. Then after that, do what? Cut it down. Let's look at what Paul had to go through after three years. Let's go to Galatians 1 and 11. Galatians 1 and 11. Same pattern. Three years. And then we're going to show you in the law where that comes from. Three years is what the Lord gives you before you reach that age of accountability. Three years in that fourth year, he's showing you grace. Let's go here, Galatians 1 and verse. Galatians 1 and 11. Read. But I certify you, brethren, that the God of which was preached of me is not after man. Uh huh. For I neither received it of men, mm -hmm. neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past, and the Jews' religion, had that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. No, she said in times past. Mm -hmm. But now go ahead. And profited in the Jews' religion above many, many my equals in my own nation, mm -hmm. being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my father. Uh huh. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, and called me by his grace. See, so he got separated from his Hebrewisms. That's what that's talking about, y'all. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, and called me by his what? His grace. Hold this spot. Hold this spot. And go to Ephesians 2 and uh, 8. Ephesians 2 and 8. <clears throat> It's just like when you go into a, 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 a rental contract with somebody about an apartment or a home. You get a grace period. Five days. They don't want you. They ain't going to cut you out. They ain't going to put you out if you didn't pay the rent on the first day. Child, please. But did you earn that? Nope. That comes with the contract. 
They got it. You got great. Five days after that, then he looking at you. So same way with the Lord right here. He was uh, Ephesians 2 and 8. Ephesians 2 and 8. Read. For by grace are ye saved through faith, uh -huh. and that not of yourselves. Uh -huh. It is the gift of God. Not of works, uh -huh. as any man should boast. Uh -huh. But we are in his workmanship, creating Christ Jesus unto good works. Unto what? Good works. Unto good works. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So we should walk in these works that God ordained before that are what? Good works. Now let's go back to Galatians and watch how long Paul had before he can actually get into this thing. We're going to go to Galatians. One, this time, verse 18. That's a 16. Now let's 1 and 16. Read. To reveal his son in me. Yes. That I might preach him among the heap. Uh -huh. Immediately I con conferred, not with flesh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles, apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Mm -hmm. Verse 18, then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem. Oh, after three years. After three years, y'all. Paul had to go watershed. Paul had to get in and study and learn and cleanse and go through the whole three-year process. After three years, he came up to Jerusalem to see what? In a boat, oh, to see Peter. In a boat with him 15 days. Uh-huh. But other of the but other of the apostles saw I none save James, the Lord's brother. Uh-huh. Now, now let's skip down to uh, verse uh uh verse 21. Verse 21. Afterwards I came into the the regions of Syria and Cilicia. And was unknown by faith unto the churches of Judea, mm -hmm. which were in Christ. Uh -huh. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past, now preaches the faith with which once he destroyed. Uh -huh. And they glorified God in me. See, now, and now after that, now they glorified God in him because he said, but they had heard only that he which persecuted us in what times past, now preaches the faith which he once destroyed. And no, they glorify God and me. Now let's go to the law. Let's go to uh Matthew. Let's go back with Jesus called us trees, y'all. Matthew 7 and 7 and 10. Matthew 7, 17. Matthew 7, chapter, verse 17. Because once you read stage three, the accountability, and you had three years of studying. Three years of continuing with three years of the new creature life. Three years of the kingdom life. Three years of the born again life. Three years of the son of God life. And you can't tell nobody nothing. You can't show nobody about salvation. It's like making a little three-year-old. Uh, you still keep feeding him similar. He gonna bitch and start looking at mommy. What's wrong with you, mommy? <laughs> Think about it. After three years. But Jesus said this about us. 7 and 17. Read. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. Yes, sir. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Uh-huh. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Uh-huh. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Uh-huh. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Oh, so every fruit that at the look three years, y'all. Mm. He looking for that fruit. He trying to see uh, that good. Cause he planted good things in you. He gave you that new life. Gave you a second birth. He looking for a, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit. It's you down the calf into the fire. Go ahead. Verse 20. Wherefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. See, by their fruits, you shall what? Know them. Why is it so important? Let's go to Leviticus 19 and 23. Leviticus 19 and 23. Leviticus 
Because those are the learning years. Them the years you wash, you should be clean. You been able to book three years, you've been learning and studying and growing and come off of milk and you, now you're starting, you know. And the Lord put it right in front of us, especially if you got a child that's three years old now. Oh, you like, man, look. I mean, she used to whine all night, keep us up all night. Oh, no, she's doing better. Oh, man, we, you know, we can. Hey, she's, her sleep schedule is right along with ours. Hey, I can give some baby food. Baby growing up, start not be, I got to give baby some toys, more toys. Can't just have a little rubber duck. Okay? Same with in the spirit, y'all. Running around, milling around in the milk. Can't do that. Baby's milk for the rest of your life. Can't do that. Especially trying to get in the first resurrection. Amen. You're not going to make it. That's why the book said, Crow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And right here, watch this, y'all. Look at this, 19 and 23. Go ahead. And when ye shall come into the land and shall have planted all manner of trees. Of trees for food. See, the Lord likes us into trees. And you should know a tree by the fruit it bears. So now we're saying he plant all manner of trees for food. Go ahead. Then ye, then ye shall count the fruit thereof as uncircumcised. Uh, Three years shall it be. Fifteen there. years. No. A year. No. How many years did we just read? Three years. Three years. It is counted uncircumcised. And you can see that when young people that got this zeal and so they come in the world, you be like, oh man, you you killing everybody. You <laughs> I remember I had to be look, Jacob, look, dude, you can't, oh man. Because I was in my own circumcision. Mm. You know, I had this zeal for God and oh my God, bro, man, bro, Jacob, my brother said, man, don't kill. He's like, man, you spraying them like, oh dude, you got to turn it down, turn it down, turn it down. Because I was, but the reason why, because I was in that three-year period, uncircumcised. So three years shall it be uncircumcised. Go ahead. But to you, yes. it should not be eaten up. Uh-huh, because you're too busy studying. You're too busy learning. You're too busy growing. You're too busy purging. You're too busy all in that stage two. You're getting all of that. You're going through all the things. You're getting chastised. And, oh, my God. You, you know, you... You put, you're going through all these things and that's why you're uncircumcised for these three years and you shall not be eaten up. But watch this. Verse 24. But in the fourth year, all the fruit thereof should be holy to praise the Lord. Oh, but in the fourth year, you should be ready to praise the Lord. And it said, in the fourth year, all the fruit there shall be what? Holy. And when you look back on the wall, you be like, oh, yeah, I did kind of have a little bit better grip on things on time I did that for a year. Because you really understand adding those patience, long suffering, and godliness and temper. After a while, you be like, oh, I did kind of go in too hard on I mean, dang, I didn't have to say all of that. Yeah. But when you get to that fourth year, it said, all the fruit there should be holy to praise the Lord. Go ahead. And in the fifth year shall ye eat of the fruit thereof. Yes, sir. That it may yield unto the unto you the increase thereof. Uh -huh. I am the Lord your God. See, they're gonna glorify God in you by then. I know me and my brother came here, child, but they like, man, y'all be wrecking these false prophets. Y'all wrecking your family, you wrecking, you wrecking everybody. But a few and later on, we look back like. Uh, you know, we was kind of over righteous. You know, we kind of, you know, we had to call everybody a liar all the time. No. Because that's that three years. You you get, you read, but in that fourth year, and then they say in that fifth year, that you may yield your increase there, I am the Lord, what? Your God. That's why Paul went through, and they find glorified God, what? In him after all that time, y'all. Why? Because he's, now you reach the age of accountability. And let's pursue this a little further. Let's go to what he did to his apostles. Let's go right here to St. John 21 and 14. Matter of fact, no, Colossus. Colossus. It's even written here. Colossus 1 and 9. Colossus 1 and 9. 
But this is what's going on. Colossus 1 and 9. This is what's going on. It is suggesting that that, that latter end of, of stage 2, because once you reach stage 2, you reach that accountability. You ought to be in this plane. Look, this is the Lord Sabbath day. No, no, no doubt about it. Look, here we go. The book tell you right. You ought to be able to say, here it is. Right. You should be able to, Ezekiel is in the Old Testament. Isaiah, Jeremiah, let me take you to the 23rd. You should be able to show some things. Somebody ask you a reason. you have been held accountable. We're going to read that. We're going to read Colossians 1 and 9. This accountability. Because you're giving people the knowledge of salvation. Why? Because you've been through the process and you don't see Man, these people are lost. So, let me learn this so I can earn this, the pursue saving people from pagan, paganized Christianity, from all this other stuff. We get into that later on the next month, prayer of adventure. Uh, but I'm going to go to Colossians 1 and 9. This is what you're going through in them three years. Read. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, uh -huh. and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will, and all wisdom, and yes. spiritual understanding. Yes, so that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will, and all wisdom, and spiritual understanding. Go ahead. Verse 10. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Uh, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being what? Being fruitful in every good work. Yes, sir. And increasing in the knowledge of God. And doing what? Increasing. Increasing. Remember, you started as a newborn baby when you got baptized. Wow, you hit that water, now you got newborn baby. Now you have to increase in the knowledge. You being filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding and through that whole three years, the Lord looking at you. Is he, is he doing this? Is he getting this? Looking for that fruit. That good fruit to come forth. That third year hit you. Hey, it should be some of our witnesses be able to, you know what? That bro ain't the same bro. That sister ain't the same sister I knew about three years ago. Why? Because you've been held accountable for what you say you have. You have salvation for what? For style is this. Anyway. But uh, you ain't got the same Jesus you had three years ago. Matter of fact, you know how to teach Jesus this book. At least at a minimum. But increasing in the knowledge of our Lord. Go ahead. Stricken the Stricken with all might according to his glorious power. Mm -hmm. And to all patience and long suffering with joy, joyfulness. Yes, sir. So now let's do this. Let's go to Luke 1 and 68. Because this is the stage three uh, indicated right here. Because John the Baptist, the Lord came and brought him into the situation. Put my mic in there. Go ahead on. My mic going in there. Make sure you're not. No, I'm talking about from the speaker. I'm battery getting you know. Anyway, watch this, y'all. Luke 1 and 68. Because when you reach stage 3, you are given the knowledge of salvation. You are prepared to do so. Right? Because you did three years, going on four years of what? Study, increasing in knowledge, learning the will of God. All these things that you look back at me like, wow, I was foolish at it. Three years going into the fourth year where you can praise the Lord. And people look at you and be like, wow, what a difference three years has made. That's why Paul had to lead that environment. But Luke 1 and 68, let's read that. Read. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, mm -hmm. for he hath visited and redeemed his people, mm -hmm. and hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Raised up a horn of what? Salvation. Go ahead. Verse 70. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, 
which have been since the, the world began. Mm -hmm. That we should be saved from our enemies. That we should be what? Saved. saved. Who are our enemies now, y'all? The ones that's straight up against God. Being saved from people that's just want to honor out of their mind. Well, if, no, that's the enemy of God. We can read who the enemy is of God. They hate God. But he said, save from our enemies. Go ahead. And from the hand of all that hate us. Yes, sir. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers. Uh-huh. And to remember his, ho his holy covenant. Yes, sir. The oath which he swore to our father Abraham. Mm -hmm. That he would grant unto us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him with our fear. Yes, sir. And holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our lives. See, to serve him in holiness and in righteousness before him all the days of our life. Let's skip down to verse 7, 77. Verse 77. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people mm. by the remission of their sin. See, at this stage three, you are to give knowledge of what? Salvation to his people by the remission of their sins. Go ahead. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high has visited us. To give light to them that sit in the darkness. Yes. And in the shadow of death. Yes, to give light to them, y'all. Because what did you just got to do? You just got to learning how to come into the light, how to stay out of that darkness. Three years. Going into your fourth year, you learn how to come out of that and not to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. Go ahead. To guide our feet into the way of peace. To guide our feet in the way of peace. Now let's go to, now that we read that Colossians, let's go to Proverbs 9 and 9. Because after them three years, Proverbs 9, verse 9. Yeah. Yeah. Read Proverbs 9 and 9. Wait. Give instruction to a wise man. That's why he gives you the gift of the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is supposed to lead and guide and what? Teach you, right? Mm -hmm. So, and instruct you. So, give instruction to a wise man. Go ahead. And he will be yet wiser. Yes. Teach a, man, teach a just man. Yes. And he will increase and learn. See, the Lord said, and he will increase in learning. He gave me three years. Three years. And the Lord show you in, in children. They don't just stay on the same little thing. After three years, you be like, uh oh, I got, oh, hmm. So you want a little bit more, huh? Okay. Even like that in the military. Your first three years in the military, your first year, they break you down with what? Basic training. Then you come out as a what? Private. We don't, I'm being retired, but we didn't expect the private to know anything, y'all. We like, hold on, let me, let me go. But now, after he's hit special level, you have been in the army for three years or military for three years, we're like, okay now. Uh we don't expect you to uh be uh you know like you just arrived last night. You did just come out of basic training last week, man. Soldier, private, specialist. What's what's happening? Accountability is on his what? On his way. Right. Yeah. Same way with the word of God. The Lord looking after those three years, he's looking for that accountability. As you learn, as you increase it in knowledge, go ahead. The, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yes. And the knowledge of the, ho of the holy is understanding. See, the knowledge of the holy is understanding. The Lord is looking for you to increase in it. From a newborn babe, now you're growing up, now you're going to see. Do you have the fear of the Lord, uh, the wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy? That is understanding. And once you got that, you're ready to feed. You're ready to give it to people. That's why he told the apostles this, Sean. Let's go to, uh, uh, now let's go to John 21 and 14. St. John 21 and 14. Because this is after three years, three and a half years, after Jesus' death and resurrection, this is what he told Peter to do. 
That's why it's so important to deal with timelines in the Bible. Mm -hmm. You start seeing the pattern, you be like, yep. uh oh. Okay, you get some understanding. You be like, oh, certain things happen at certain times for a certain reason. And right here, St. John 21 14. This is three and a half years. This is after Jesus' death and resurrection. Look what he told me. Let's go right at verse 14. St. John 21 and verse 14. Read. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. So remember now, he had been with his disciples for at least how long, y'all? Three and a half years. Did anybody know? Mm -hmm. Jesus walked around with his apostles three and a half years and they went through all that they went through with his apostles. We can all read it in the Gospels, all of that. Okay? Now look what he tells Peter. And ask, look at the question he asked. Watch this, y'all. Verse 15. So, what, so when they had done, Jesus said, said to Simon, Peter, Simon, son of, uh, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? Now he asked him, wait a minute, after three and a half, why wasn't going to ask him, lovest thou me? After being there for three and a half years, why? Why, y'all? Go ahead. He said unto him, yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, feed my lamb. He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He says unto him, Yeah, Lord, thou, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, mm. Feed my sheep. Oh, he said, Do what? Feed, feed my, my sheep. After three, after what? Three years? Three and a half years? He said, Now you tell him, Feed my sheep? Because right. he had to go through the process of three years. Now you ready to feed his sheep. Let's go to Matthew uh, the 18th chapter and verse 19. Now they're being held accountable for walking around with the Lord. That's right. For three and a half years. You imagine you walk around with Jesus for three and a half years. You ain't ready? Mm. One of them said, one of the apostles fell, and we're going to read, as I said, 11 here. But Matthew 28 and verse uh, 19. Look what he told him after he had received power from him. Matthew 28 and 19. Oh. Yes, Matthew 28 verse 19. 28 and 19. Good. Check. Matthew 28 and 19. Look what he said after three and a half years. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Oh, now they ready to teach all nations. Go for go and teach all nations doing what? Baptizing them in the name of the Father. Which is Jesus. And of the Son. We know it's Jesus. And of the Holy Ghost. It's Jesus told you you're going to send the Father, going to send the Holy Ghost in my name. And who was saying that? Jesus. Go ahead. Teaching them to observe all See, things. See, teaching them. Now they're ready to teach. Right. At a minimum, you got to be in this thing. Now they're being held accountable. How are you going to teach something that you don't understand or know? Right. Because the Lord is holding them accountable at this point. Go ahead. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Mm -hmm. And lo, I am with you always. Even unto the end of the world. So let's go to Hebrews, y'all. Hebrews, the 13th chapter. And verse 17. Because now I haven't been in the, been walking around with the Lord physically or being involved with the word. Now, the commandment is this, y'all. The accountability stands. Because watch this, y'all. Hebrews 13 and verse 17. He's talking to them that's at stage two of salvation. And watch this. Hebrews 13 and verse 17. Read. Obey them that have the rule over you. Uh-huh. And submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls. So we that have... Achieve stage three 
He said they watch because you can see what's going on with the soul. You can be like, man, the false prophets are deceiving people. Mm -hmm. Man, you sitting up there, your diet. You can you have the eyes to see. That's why they say they watch for your souls. As they must give it, they must give it a what? Go ahead. As they that must give account. See, we got to give an account, y'all. Mm -hmm. We have to give an account. Go ahead. That they may do it with joy. Yes. And not with grief. Not with grief. Go ahead. For that is unprofitable for you. That's right. So we must be held accountable. Once you come across, that's why the Lord looking for that fruit, y'all. So we're going to show you how the Lord really went into this thing. Let's go to uh, Jeremiah 315. Jeremiah 315. Because he told Peter, feed my sheep. So it's possible. Teach all nations after three and a half years. Jeremiah 3 and 15. You want to read this one verse? Jeremiah 3 and verse 15. Read. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, mm -hmm. which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. See? At this point of accountability, we have to be ready to what feed what knowledge and understanding. Now there's different levels in this thing. Once you stage three, and we're gonna look at how the Lord set in this church, y'all, certain things to set up. But look, let's go to uh, 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 I want to go now to Acts seven and uh, thirty six, because in this church, no, Acts eight, my bad, Acts eight and twenty six. Because at this point, you are moved by the Spirit, the Word of God, and the Lord knows you know some things to help people out. Amen. This is where the task and the missions start coming up. You see your brother. Like when I saw my brother, I was like, Lord, you know, I, I can't just let him sit back and suffer in that way. I hear them down. Because I ended up bringing my brother in the Word. I think he came in like two months, because I came in like January. He came in like June. I think it's May or June. I think it was right after the rabbits. He stayed around like May. May time frame. That's when I dealt with him on it. That's when he came in. But right here, Acts 8 and uh, Acts 8 and 26. Because now the angels, the spirit is going to be moving with you at that point. I didn't know you know some things to save some people, y'all. That's right. You can have to show them what the Sabbath day, what day really is on. After three and a half years, going into that fourth year to praise the Lord, the fifth, you ought to be at a minimum, minimum, navigate milk without a problem. But look what the Spirit moving right here. Because this guy had, he's at the age of accountability. And look what the Lord told Philip. Go ahead. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south unto the way that go down from Jerusalem, uh -huh. to Gaza, which is desert. Uh -huh. And he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, mm -hmm. who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, uh -huh. was returning, verse 28, was returning and sitting in his chariot read Isaiah the prophet. Uh -huh. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. She knows the angel is a spirit. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. Go ahead. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read, heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understoodest thou what thou readest? Notice. Heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? Mm. You already knew to go to Jerusalem, which means he had been in the queue. He knew you saw the worship and keep the high days. For the worship. Let me state that. It said he went up to worship. And it said, Understandest thou what thou what readest? Mm -hmm. 
So obviously he was looking at this guy as a babe. Now what did it, what did he say? Verse 31. And he said, How can I accept some man? Should God he's in the bay, he's in that learning stage. Amen. He's in, so we see stage three and stage two right there, side by side. The one that can guide him and the one that knows he needs to be what? Guided. Oh, he said, he said, How can I say so, man? Should guide me. Go ahead. And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Mm -hmm. Verse 32. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. Mm -hmm. And like a lamb done before his shearer. Mm -hmm. So opened he not his mouth. Mm -hmm. And his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? Uh -huh. For his life is taken from the earth. Good. Now watch what the eunuch says. Go ahead. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? See, this is a genuine heart that was seeking to get what? Understanding. Because right. he was in that stage too. Mm. Getting that understanding. Let me see what he's talking about. That's why we have questions after every lesson. So or we have one, I think, on the dialogue. Tell you got questions. One that want to know that's in that stage too. They seek it like, man, what is this talking about? So he trying to get some understanding. Is this man speaking of himself or of some other man? Go ahead. Verse 35, then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Because he was at stage three, y'all. He knew the Old Testament was preaching about Jesus. Mm. He knew. He had the understanding. He was at the stage three level, y'all. He was able to minister understanding and knowledge, feed this man knowledge and understanding that the scripture was talking about who? Jesus. Now, once he did that, go ahead. Verse 36. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. Mm -hmm. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. Mm -hmm. What do it hinder me to be baptized? Okay. And well, actually, this guy hadn't even gotten in the queue yet. Because he's finna get baptized. So he hadn't even hit with stage one. But he was seeking. So here we go. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, mm. thou mayest. Uh -huh. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So what we actually seeing is this man bringing stage three, bringing someone into stage what? Two. Right. Man, I've been baptized yet, so he got to get his old sins off of him. Boom. So now... He can actually see the gift of the Holy Ghost and accept his understanding. And Philip said, if thou believest with all thy heart, thy mayest, and he answered and said, what? I believe that Jesus is the son, Christ is the Son of God. Now, we got to understand the context of the time of this. This is a hard thing to do back then. Mm -hmm. It's almost like in the eyes of like today, somebody said, hey man, you want to buy some crack cocaine? If you say, yeah, whoo. That's how it was. That's how they treated the Christian, the Bible Christians. I gotta put a handle. The Bible Christians or the church that the book of Acts talks about was treated back then. It's like following Jesus back then. It's like following a criminal. So for him to say, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that was a heavy task. Nowadays, you just gotta teach the right Jesus and ask, do you believe in the Jesus of this Bible? In this dispensation in time. But right here in this book, for him to say he believed, that was a hard pill to swallow. Go ahead. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, mm -hmm. both Philip and the unit. Uh -huh. And he baptized him. Boom, brought him on to a uh, stage to baptize another place that he now he was saved. Now he ready to get that understanding and to grow and get that knowledge. Of Christ to grow in Christ. So now let's do ourselves a favor and let's go look at the church from the Old Testament and see how the Lord set this thing up. Let's go to Acts 7 and 36. Acts 7, sorry, and 37. Acts 7 and 37. Yeah, man, look. One chapter. And we're gonna read because the church didn't just start in the New Testament. The church came under Jesus' name in the New Testament. Well, we're going to see from the first church how he set up his, his protocol, 
his stage of salvation and how everybody was held accountable when they was held accountable. And we're going to see this right here. Go, uh, Acts 7 and 37. Read. This is that Moses was sent unto the children of Israel. A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye hear. Mm -hmm. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai. And with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. Yes, sir. Now let's go to uh, Numbers 8. We're going to go to Numbers 8, chapter and verse 9. Because in the church, in the congregation, we're going to see that the Lord had levels of stages of operation that would assist and give service to those that were being held accountable for the ministry. And we're going to go to Acts, I'm sorry, Numbers. It's in Numbers 8 and verse 9. Because the Lord, from the most in the church, the Lord has sanctified the priesthood. Right. Mm -hmm. And the priesthood was held accountable for the ministry of God's work in the congregation. We'll see you right here. Numbers 8 and 9. Because this is written for an example, y'all. And for our edification. Read. And I shall bring the Levites before the tabernacle of the congregation. And that what the church is, y'all? Uh, the congregation is the church. Church is the congregation, and thou shalt what? And thou shalt gather the whole assembly of the children of Israel together. Yes. And I shall bring the Levites before the Lord, and the children of Israel shall put their hands upon the Levites. Wow. Go ahead. And Aaron shall offer the Levites before the Lord for an offering of the children of Israel uh -huh. that they may execute the service of the Lord. See, that they may execute the what? The service of the Lord. The Lord had, under the old covenant, he had the Levites held accountable for the service of the Lord. Go ahead. Verse 12. And the Levites shall lay their hands upon the heads of the bullocks, mm -hmm. and thou shalt offer the, offer the one for a sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering mm -hmm. to the Lord, uh -huh. to make an atonement of the Levites. I mean, I told me for the Levites. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt set the Levites before Aaron uh -huh. and for his sons and, and offer them for an offering to the Lord. Mm -hmm. thus, thus shalt thou separate the Levites from among the children of Israel, and the Levites shall be mine. That's when the ministry to the Lord, they became his. The Levites, just like the ministers at stage three. Look, you've been held accountable to the Lord for each and every soul. You come in contact with. That's why I like about good. That's why when I baptize somebody, God, please, you go into the Word of God because we're supposed to belong to the Lord. And He said, the children under the old covenant, you, the Levites, are here. We're going to show you how we belong to the Lord even under the New Testament. Go ahead. That's why we got, we've been held accountable. We give an account. But go ahead. And after, and after that, shall the Levites go into Go in to do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. Mm -hmm. And I should cleanse them and offer them for an offering. So now they need to cleanse and huh? Just like when you become a new babe in Christ, you need what? Cleanse it. Mm -hmm. Same process, y'all. But this is under the old covenant. Go ahead. For they are holy, given unto me from among the children of Israel. Uh -huh. Instead of such as open every womb, uh -huh. even instead of the firstborn of all the children of Israel, have I taken them unto me. Uh -huh. For all the firstborn of the children of Israel are mine, yes. both man and beast. On the day that I smote every firstborn in the land of Egypt, I sanctified them for myself. Uh -huh. And I have, verse 18, and I have taken the Levites for all the firstborn of the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I have given the Levites as a gift to Aaron. And to his sons from among the, the children of Israel to do the service of the children of Israel. To, and to the do the service, what? Of the children of Israel. Go ahead. In the what? In the tabernacle of the congregation. Yes, sir. And to make an atonement for the children of Israel. Yes, sir. That they be no plague among the children of Israel. Yes, sir. And the children of Israel come nigh un unto the sanctuary. Right, because we give now to salvation. We show you what the Lord wants you to. That's what stage two needs, stage three. Because we the ones that show stage two. Hey, look, this is how you do this, and this is how you walk this way. You show so that the plague ain't gonna come near you. That's what they were doing under the old covenant. 
We can say, I'm going to show you under the new. That's why we are held accountable, y'all. Go ahead. Verse 20. And Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel did to the Levites according to all that the Lord commanded Moses concerning the Levites. Mm -hmm. So did the children of Israel unto them. Uh huh. And the Levites were purified and they washed their clothes. And Aaron offered them as an offering before the Lord. And Aaron made an atonement for them to cleanse them. Just how we wash now, what? With the word, we do that cleansing ourselves for filthiness of the what? Spirit and of the what? Flesh. Amen. Yeah. Same process, except for this is on the carnal side. We're going to see it on the spiritual side shortly, though. Go ahead. 22. And after that, went the Levites in to do their service in the tabernacle of the congregation yes, before, sir. Aaron, before his sons. As the Lord had made the most concerning the Levites, so did they unto them. See, after the cleansing, after you don't walk through that stage too, that three and a half years, going into that fourth or fifth year, possibly it all depends on your situation, how you came in, where you came in, and when you came in, whether you married or single, you know, the husband or the wife, a teenager, or you own the up end, all of that's why the Lord gave you that fourth and that fifth year, because he kind of cover all the bases, y'all. Because some of us need a little more, but it ain't never less than, y'all. Never less. Here we go. Read. Verse 23. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, This is it that belongeth unto the Levites from twenty and five years. Old and upward, they should go into wait upon the service of the tabernacle. Now, notice from 25 years old and upward, they should go into wait upon the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. Go ahead. And from the age of 50 years, they shall cease waiting upon the service thereof, mm -hmm. and shall serve no more. Uh -huh. It's under the old covenant. Go ahead. Verse, verse 26. But shall minister with their brethren in the tabernacle of the yes. congregation. Yes. To keep the charge. Yes. And shall do no service. Yes. Thus shalt thou do unto the Levites touching their charge. Notice that, John. Thus shalt thou do unto the Levites as touching their charge. Now let's go look at the church under the new cup. Let's go to uh, 2 Timothy 4 and 1. Look what Paul says here. And he's saying this to a Gentile. Second Timothy four and one. Second Timothy four and one. Read. I charge thee. Oh, Paul is charging this European, this Caucasian, this Gentile. I charge thee. Go ahead. Therefore, before God. Yes. And the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his and his kingdom. And that's the physical kingdom. But notice, he's charging because we are in the church of Christ, not the church of God. Yep. It ain't based on no carnality, y'all. The institution started with Israel and it ain't changed. We dealt with that already. But I want to just, just touch on that for a basis. Now let's do ourselves a favor. Let's go to Psalms. Uh, 77 and 20. Psalm 77 and 20. Actually, I want to buy time. Uh, let's go to 1 Corinthians. What? 1 Corinthians 12 and 27. 1 Corinthians 12 and 27. Now we're going to look at the church. Under the new cup. 1 Corinthians 12 and 27. Read. Now ye are the body of Christ, uh -huh. and members in particular. Uh huh. And God has set some in the church. Now no, God has not. He has set some in the church. Let's see what that what that's called. Go ahead. First apostles. So he got apostles. Go ahead. Secondarily, prophets. Prophets. Thirdly, teachers. Teachers. After that, miracle. Yes. Then it gives of healing. Uh huh. Helps. Governments. Diversities of tongues. 
Verse 29. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Mm. Are all workers of miracles? Mm. Verse 30. Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? Notice this is what's in the body of Christ in his church. Apostles, prophets, teachers, miracles, gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversity of tongues. Then he said, are all apostles? Apostles are people that are reformist. That's why the apostles were called it. We looked at the word, they're pioneers in something that needs to be reformed. That's why the time of reformation occurred when Jesus came, according to Hebrews 9th chapter. He brought in the time of reformation that created apostles. Hence, next he said, uh, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all the terms. These are the gifts that are dispersed throughout the body. And as you're going to that stage too and come headed for that accountability stage, the gifts will be revealed to you. We will, don't tell what the Lord got you doing in the form of helps. Right. Or in the form of doing miracles, or in the form of teaching, or governing the church. That's why I said government. Okay? Thirdly, teachers and prophets. But now let's do ourselves a favor. Let's go to Ephesians. Let's go to Ephesians, the uh, fourth chapter, and examine this even closer. Now that this accountability, remember, we said those that have rule over you, apostles and prophets and teachers, they help, they help guide pretty much. Stage two. Right. Stage three. We know what's going on. We solid. We tried. You know, we got experience. You know, we've been through years through, uh, yeah, growing and getting it right and studying and figuring it out. Okay, this and that. You know, did three and a half years of that. Not to say you never stop learning that. Right. But you don't reach that accountability where you stand on what you know. Now. You ain't walking around being tossed to and fro and, well, hopeful we say, you know, what we going to do, what, you know, nobody said. Brother, you can fall. We ain't saying stuff like that. Because we understand we are held accountable. And now we're going to help stage two come along. We're going to, oh, we definitely want to put people on stage one. Look, we're going to get some ones to put them in two so they can get the three so we can get some help. Amen. Okay, y'all. So these people here, man, look. We need some help. No, and stage three. Trust. Pray. Uh, Ephesians 3, y'all. Ephesians 4 and 11. Further examine this, y'all. Ephesians 4 chapter and verse uh, verse 11. 4 and 11. 4 and 11. Go ahead. And he gave some apostles. Yes. And some prophets. Yes. And some evangelists. Yes. And some pastors, yes, and teachers, mm -hmm. for the per perfecting of the saints. See how you gonna perfect the saints if you ain't even got the understanding of knowledge, right? Or you haven't increased in learning. That's stage two stuff. Now you ready to help perfect the saints? It said for the perfecting of the saints. Go ahead for the work of the ministry. You gotta come get this work. Yes. You learn now. It's time to work. You can't hear what I'm Well, you know, Jesus loves everybody. That, that's real. That's real. No, that you got. Hey, wait. Lord gonna kill a lot of everybody. I'm gonna save as many as I can. I thought you gonna put the work of the ministry. Go ahead. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Yes, sir. Till we all come in the unity of faith. Yes. Of the faith. Yes. And of the knowledge of the Son of God. Mm -hmm. Unto a perfect man. See, until we mature, y'all. Now, this is stage accountability to a mature person. That's what perfect means in this case, y'all. I got a lesson about what the perfect means. It ain't just one dimension, y'all. Okay? Perfect. Until you come to a perfect man, until the what? Until the measure of the structure of the fullness. Stature. stature. Sorry, right. Of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And see, that's a process, y'all. That stage three gets you going. You may start out as an evangelist or a help, you know, in about four years, in your fourth year. Then by the time you get to about mm, three years more, you're like, look, I want to stand up and lead a lesson. Mm. You know, Lord, they showed me to apostleship. Lord, don't brought me to a point where I'm a prophet or I can pastoral. 
Why? Because at that stage, you're dealing with accountability. You're dealing with the work. You hit the work in. Yes. You've got, you have arrived at the point where you are able to see that stage two and how many, you know, trying to get people in the war, bring them as two so they can come and be of what? Help. Because watch this, go ahead. Verse 14. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. See, that we henceforth be no more children. That means you stage two. We don't want you to be the baby Christ. Okay? Mm -hmm. That you henceforth be no more children. Go ahead. And carried about with every wind of doctrine. See, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Our responsibility in stage three is very critical. Amen. We make sure you ain't get flip flop and flip flammed. We're gonna drop this book. Why? Because we don't we don't been through some things. Three and a half years of roughing it and getting hit upside the head. I got correct. Oh man, he dropped book. Oh, I got knocked out. I'm back up. All through all through your third year. I mean through the first three years. That's what you go through. Oh, I was foolish and ignorant. I ain't doing that no more. And you figured it out. Now you ready. To henceforth have the children that they do not be tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine. By what? By the, the slate of men mm. and, mm. and cunning craftiness, mm. whereby they they lie and wait to mm. deceive. Mm -hmm. But go ahead. But speaking the truth in love, yes, sir, may grow up into him in all things, which is the he, which, which is the head, even Christ. Notice that they may grow up. You helping people grow up. Yes. So you may need a Bible study, you know, you may start out with a little Bible study and eventually, you know, you'll help, you urge or whatever. You help for people to get that growth, you encourage it. That's how so we have accountable. This is state of accountability. Ministry, work, knowledge of salvation. All of this is critical in stage three. Critical. Go ahead. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supports. Supply it mm -hmm. according to the effectual working in the measure of every part. Yes, sir. Make it increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. See, increase on the body. This is our job. We make sure this increase because we know we need help. <laughs> we need help at stage three, y'all. That's why the Lord said the great is the harvest, but few out of what? Labors, y'all. We be yeah. like, dude, I need another bro. Let's go. Why? Because at that calibrated level, you, you see the need. You see the need of salvation. You need see the need to teach the babies and the young. You see that. So you're bringing them up till they get to the point where now you've been held accountable. Now you know what I know, so we need to go out and you know what? Get them, save them. Save them. Now, let's go to Romans 2 and 17 because Paul brings about this stage three in a certain type of way here. And I want to make sure we clearly understand what, because it's kind of, you got one, stage one, two, and three, all in this Romans 10 chapter. Romans 10 and verse uh, 10, and we want to go 10 and start at verse 13. Well, don't tell the Lord put you in this help. Then you move over to the apostleship. I mean, you may move over to a teacher or apostle or probably don't tell how the Lord will set you in the body. But edifying of the saints. Once you reach that age of accountability within the salvation structure. Right. Within the structure of salvation, y'all. That's what we're talking here. Romans 10 and verse 17. I mean, 13. Read. For, who shall call, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Absolutely. But Paul didn't stop there. Go ahead. How then should they call on him in whom they have not believed? Mm. And, who, and how should they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Mm. And how should they hear without a preacher? Oh, so how did they go hear without a preacher? So who's, why, did, why did Paul put a preacher in here? Right. Hold this spot. Let's hold this spot. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 11. Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 11. That's why I say each stage of this is critical. Just as critical and necessary as the next one. <laughs> stage one, we're not going to ignore saving people from paganized Christians. We're not going to ignore that people get saved now 
from their sin, get redeemed from their past sin. We're not going to ignore that. This entire series is to acknowledge all four stages because all four are critical to salvation. Amen. All four are necessary. It's just necessary to get to the end as it is to get on the path of salvation. Amen. How are you going to do it to the end and get saved if you never got saved from false prophets and destroying pastors and this lying, this all manner of the course, Lord? If you never got out of that, the end, you will be destroyed. So what's really important, the beginning and the, the, the second stage and the middle stage and that last stage, all of it's equal, y'all. So right here, you got the Paul put preacher in there? Please yes, it's 12 and verse 9. But remember, hold that Romans. Hold that Romans 10, we're going back. You said, how say they preach? How say they hear without the preach? Romans, I said, please ask 12 and verse 9. Go ahead. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, yes. he still taught the people knowledge. Yes. Yeah, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. This is a stage three salvation piece. That's right. Flat out. That preacher started out as a baby. Okay. But now he's what he's wise. He taught the people what? Knowledge. He was feeding the sheep. Yeah, he gave good heed and saw it out and said in order as many proverbs. He didn't start out like that, did he? No. Why? Because he had to get saved first. Go through stage two and learn and increase in knowledge and wisdom and understand spiritual understanding. And now he's arrived at the preacher and wise. And what did what does he do? Go ahead, team. The preacher sought to find the acceptable word. Because he had exercised that for what doing that. He went breaking his book over and over and over. Right. Yeah. You don't go to that stage too, partner. He sought to find the acceptable words. Go ahead. And that which was written was a bright, even words of truth. You got that right. Go ahead. The words of the wise are as Goes yes, and as nails fastened by the master, the masters of the symbol. Oh, now he's a master of a symbol. Notice it said masters. Mm. Okay. That's how you got different class. They just, you know, I don't let the knowledge one like my brother David, my brother John, brother Judah, my brother Carl. Look, we have reached the status of accountability, and we are looked at as masters of the assemblies. But however, what? Which is given for what? Which are given from one shepherd. Look, that's Jesus. Amen. We all got the same dad. We got an answer to the one she chief shepherd. He dropped this book. We have an accountable for this, y'all. So let's go back. Let's go back to this room. You don't hold no baby accountable. Little children running around. Man, look, I, I'm going to hold my 10 year old daughter accountable for my rent. Really? Shall I No, she holding me accountable for rent. How about that? Okay? Same with the babe. They hold up. Look, show us, show us the word. Teach us. I want to know. Did the Lord have. Boom. That's why we have a question to ask after every rip. Straight up. So let's go back. Verse 15. Romans 10 and 15. Uh -huh. How should they preach except they be sent? Stop. Hold that spot. Let's go to St. John 3 and 34. This is the account. We held accountable for preaching this word. You got some role wearing this book. You saw the time I'm saving people from ignorance. Amen. I'm saving people from foolishness. That's my accountability. I'll be held accountable for it. So they can learn. They can get that stage too. And get eventually the stage three. We get some what? Help. <laughs> okay, y'all. St. John 3.34. Uh, after 33. Read. He that have received his testimony yes. has said to his seal that God is true. Yes. For he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God. Yes, sir. He that God has sent speaketh the words of what? God. 
Because you've been saved from people that don't speak the what? Words of God, but they say they sent from God. Mm. That's why I got this shirt on and say it. Yes, sir. Straight up. And we try to save as many as we can. But go ahead, finish that. For God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him. Mm -hmm. And that was talking about Jesus. But look, let's go back. But Jesus got the spirit without measure. He's the only man that got the spirit without measure. Everybody else got a certain measure. That's why some start out as helps. You know, like your three years, even your fourth year. Hey, you able to, hey, I can help, you know, show up to somebody this Saturday. I can be an urchin. I can provide help, or I understand how to govern the church. Sure. You know, I understand. I can be an assistant. You know, tell how the Lord had you in his body. The back to Romans 10. And uh, so, how shall they preach except they be sent? Go ahead. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. And bring glad tidings of good things. Look, let's go to Ephesians 4 and 1 now. We are held accountable at stage, at the third stage, y'all. Go ahead. Ephesians 4 and 1. Read. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, Beseech you that you walk worthy of the, the vocation wherewith ye are called. Oh, only when you got a vocation, you study to get there. Amen. This day don't just hit you over that presto. I know everything I need to know about the Bible. <laughs> no. Nah. That you walk worthy of the convocation where you are called. Go ahead. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, preparing one another in love. Yes. And endeavoring to keep the unity, endeavoring. Sorry, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the in the bond of peace. Now look, let's go to uh, Luke one and four. Now look what look what uh, Luke said. This Gentile said, "Yeah, I said he is Gentile." Luke one and one. Luke one and one. Because that's the stage of accountability, stage three, y'all. Just like your kids. Your child come up three years old and they come out of the diapers, you holding them accountable for what? Not to be pooping in their pants, right? Not to be peeing in their bed. Once they get past that stage, they're in school. Now that you know, they're kind of like, I'm gonna make sure I don't do that. You know, once they hit that high school stage, you know, we don't expect our son to be sitting up there telling them, Mommy, get your face, it's a breath. Say with God, you don't expect you to be walking around playing in milk. And in the nursery, you headed for that salvation, the accountability of salvation, y'all. Stay straight. Look what it says, Luke 1 and 1. Read. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth an order of declaration. Of those things which are most surely believed among us. Yes, sir. For as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us. Not questionable. Surely believe. Amen. Amen. We know the things that are believed. Why? Because we got it in his word. That's what we're accountable for. Yeah. To show the people. Go ahead. Even as they delivered them unto us. Yes. Which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. Yes, sir. Talking about that's a, this is Luke Gentile telling you about the apostles. So they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses. Because Luke wasn't an eyewitness. He was a, and he said they was ministers of the what? Word. Go ahead. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things. From the very first. Also, he had to be taught that he grew up to what? See, it good me also having had a perfect understanding of all things from the very first to do what? To write unto thee in order, most excellent. Theophilus. Theophilus. Yes. That thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. Oh, that thou mayest know the certainty of those things wherein thou what? Has been what? Instructed because you don't come to that stage too. Right. You got some instructions now. We got held accountable for what we've been instructed. Mm -hmm. Now let's go to uh 
uh, 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 Isaiah 62 and 6. Isaiah 62 and 6. Because the Lord has set in his church. Watch what he watch this, y'all. Isaiah 62 and 6. We are held accountable, y'all. You got some roll away in the salvation. We can read what much given, much what? Required. You've been in the book four years. Five years. You had it for six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You can't save nobody. You can't show them how to what? Salvation? Mm. When? Now. Well, you're going to do it. No, you, no, we ain't talking about stage four yet. That's toward the end. We got to get you on stage one, bro. Let me show you how get come up from under that false prophecy or false doctrine. Right. Or the things that are cloudy. No. You save the people from that. And look what it says right here. The Lord has said. 62 and verse 6. Isaiah 62 and 6. Read. Isaiah 62 and 6. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem. Oh, watchmen. Why is he saying, I have set watchmen? Right. This brother says to myself, they got some roll wear in this book. We can see stuff come. We can see it on you now. Mm -hmm. Well, the Lord has increased our understanding and knowledge, but we are held accountable for what we know. Therefore, we are what? Watchmen. Go ahead. Upon thy walls, O Jerusalem. Yes, sir. Which shall never hold their peace, day nor night. You know what? It be stuff that be bothering me day and night. Yes. And I mean it in a good way. About what this Lord said. So day and night. Yes, sir. Yes, honey. Why? Because we are being held accountable. And it'll wake up in the middle of the night. Oh, man. Dad. Yeah. We early in my wife. Like, what are you doing? Lord, just show me. I'm going to speak. Oh, you got to do it. I have to leave alone. Why? Day and night. Yeah. Because we don't reach that, that stage three. And if you got some role wearing stage three a while, the greater, man, look. He said, we shall not cease. Go ahead. Be that make mention of the Lord. Keep not silent. I, look, I can't be quiet about this book. No, go ahead. No. I give him no rest. Look, you know, they be like, I be, my wife be like, you ain't even late. I be like, well, because this thing is pretty deep. I got look, no rest. You know, you got to go, all right, man. Look, I'm telling you, but he said, give him no rest till what? Till he what? Give Give him no rest till he established. Yes, sir. Until he make Jerusalem our praise in the earth. Look, that's when the mission is accomplished, y'all. So that's why we've been held accountable. Mm -hmm. Till we establish, until we make Jerusalem a praise in the what? Earth. Now watch this, y'all. Let's go to Hebrews, the sixth chapter, verse seven. Hebrews six and seven. Instead of waking up, go to the, uh, the accountability stage. You be like, Dude, I mean, what happened? So my wife is there. Guess what? I'm like, what happened? She be bringing stuff to me. We have reached this age of accountability. Amen. Why she be bringing something to me? I'm like, wait a minute. Okay, she brings something to me that she know we're gonna hold her accountable for. So I'm not gonna just tell them listen. Wow. Okay. God. Wow. We reached that age of accountability. And right here, Hebrews. 6 and 7. Hebrews 6 and 7. To get knowledge of salvation, to save people. When? Now. Get them in that stage too. Get them babies growing them. Grow them up. Help them grow. Increasing their knowledge and understanding. Because he said the wise man will increase in what? Knowledge. And the just man shall increase in learning. Yes. Six and seven. Hebrews 6 and verse 7. Watch the show. Read. For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh up mm -hmm. upon it, mm -hmm. and bringeth forth herbs meat for them 
by whom it is dressed. Receive it. Receive it. Blessing. From that's God. why. That's why we like trees. The Lord be watering us, and you just growing up. You know, you just think about a tree that you see maybe five. Uh, uh, it started out just a little plant in the ground, and then you come back two years, three years later. You're like, whoa, there it is. Okay, come out five years. It's a little tall. Same with us, y'all. But we'll go ahead. But that which beareth thorns mm. and burrows mm. is rejected, mm. and is not unto cursing, mm. whose end is to be burned. Whose end is to be what? Burned. We don't want to be proper. Take it. Take it. That's why you serve God with a reverence and a what? Godly fear. Amen. Go ahead. But, but beloved, yes. we are persuaded better things of you. See, look, the writer's being positive. But beloved, we are persuaded better things of you. We not sit up here doubting that you go, brother. You go, you might fall off. No, we ain't talking like that. No, 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 no. We ain't, we ain't staggering. We ain't walking around here. We can feel like, no. We encouraging the baby. You can do this. Yes, amen. We persuade the better things of you, not the worst things of you. Amen. Teach, teach. That what? That a company salvation. That the company what? Salvation, y'all. I mean, I'm gonna be driving in the car and it didn't get hit. And it got the cars. Okay, why did that do? I ain't gonna hope we don't get it tonight. But we, right, we, that's the unhealthy fear. Right, man. Oh. But the things that accomplish salvation, go ahead. No, we does speak. See, that's what we speak about, y'all. Amen. For what? For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. See, that's how you got to come get this work. My daughter, 10 years old now, she knows how to pull a bowl of cereal. Amen. Okay, I ain't got too much there. <laughs> well, let me put the little bit on you and just go. Now, she only got too much. Look at that. Really? Now, she only got too much. No. He is not righteous to forget your work and labor of what? Love. Labor. Once you start learning. Yeah. Oh, man, you start learning? Look, they got to start understanding. Four plus four is eight. You know, addition, subtraction, multiplication. You got to start understanding this book. You have Old Testament, New Testament. You got law, statutes, and commandments. The Sabbath day, you, you do know these things are here now. Which is what? Show what? You show toward his what? Which he has showed toward his name. Yes. And that he have ministered to the saints and do minister. See, that's stage three now. You minister to the saints. Amen. That's why somebody called me, brother, hit me up. It's going to be late. I'll be like, well, the brother, I'll be like, man, what you call me? No, I'm ministering to the saints. That, that's all right there. I need some conversation. Because I'm at that accountability stage. Especially my back time, that brother. What's up, man? What up, Hebrew? What up, Israel? What up? It could be three in the morning. I go, hold on, I gotta go get out of the bed. Go wipe my sleep. What's up? Why? Because we do minister to the saints. That we have ministered to the saints and do minister. Go ahead. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. See, this is how we approach this, that we show the same diligence. Yes. To the full assurance mm. of hope to what? The end. That's when we walking into stage four. Mm -hmm. We taking it to the end. Go ahead. Verse 12. That ye be not sloth. See that we didn't look. Amen. You guys gonna get this work. And that you be not what? Slothful. Oh. But what? But followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Yes, sir. The followers of them, who you think this is? These are the ones that's a stage three, y'all. We believe in doing this thing. You are not questioning, well, you know what you Bro, look, I just saved you from that false prophet over here. You need to sit out here and learn the word of God. I'm going to teach you what God said to love, bro. And after you done went through that grace period, that saving period, that Jesus put on the table for all. Okay, now it's time to help. 
Let's see what the Lord done gave me after three years. I tell you, after three, four years, I be like, I'm, I got my popcorn and soda. I'm waiting for the movie that you're going to present on the table. Amen. Because the Lord holds us accountable at the stage three, y'all. Straight up. And now let's go to uh let's go to Hebrews 10 and 39. Hebrews 10 39. Because this is what we believe at this stage, y'all. Stage three, read that one verse, Hebrews 10 and 39. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. Mm. But are them that believe to the saving of the soul. See, we believe in it to the saving of the soul. When yeah. we want to save the soul now. We want to save the soul from that paganized, Satanized, fraternized, for the little the season before Jesus. When we want to save you from that? Now. Yeah. Yes. We believe in the saving of the soul now, y'all. Let's go to James 5 and 20. Right to the next book. This was stage three. This is what we on. Amen. We on this right here, y'all. We trying to save Amen. souls, man. We ain't running around talking about you got to wait to the end. No, you better get on the beginning. <laughs> you can't get you in the beginning, bro. So you can make it to the two and the three and get to the end and the four. That's what we trying to do. Because we trying to save souls. And this is what it said right here. James 5 to 20. Read. Let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death mm. and shall hide a multitude of sins. And so that's the benefit of being in stage three. You hide a multitude of sins because you believe in the converting of what? Souls. You believe in the saving of souls so you can hide a multitude of what? Sins. So when you do get in that stage four, hey man, look, I'm ready to drop. Lord, drive me. Hey, we good. You got me so I'm going to convert it, Lord. I don't change to the word of God. Save now. Woo. So this is the stage three model convention. Look, we're trying to save souls from death, wind. Now, from the error of his way. Straight up. So now let's go to uh, what Paul told Timothy in uh, 1 Timothy 4 and 8. 1 Timothy 4 and 8. 1 Timothy 4 and 8. Actually, we'll start at verse 9. 1 Timothy 4 and 9. Read. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all exception. Mm -hmm. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach. We do, especially as, especially as stage three, y'all. Amen. Now you're gonna be called all kinds by the by the false prophets and liars and all that. That's the other part of stage three. You gotta be ready to do what? Both labor and suffer what? Reproach. Mm. Why? Because we trust in the living God. You got that right. Go ahead. Who is the savior of all men. Yes, sir. Especially of those that believe. Amen. No, continue. These things command and teach. He told this Gentile to command and teach, y'all. Right. But it's actually he's part of the body of Christ. So once you reach this accountability stage, you are commanded to teach this, that we trust in a living God who's the savior of all men, especially of those that believe. These things command and teach. Go ahead. That no man despise thy youth, mm -hmm. but be thou an example of the believers. See, this is what we do in stage three. We show you how it's done. We are an example of a we sort of set that example. Amen. That's true. Because stage two, you learn it, you getting it, you you know, you're growing up in it. And then once you reach that stage three, the salvation level, now you out of what? Be thou an example of the believers in what? In words. See? Hmm. In what? In conversation. Yes, sir. In charity. Yes, sir. In spirit. Yes, sir. In faith. Yes, sir. In purity. That's what we held accountable for, y'all. Mm. At this point. Like I said, I can't sit up there hold my 18-year-old son accountable for paying rent. Child, please. He ain't got a real job yet. Well, you're on the way to get the career, y'all. But you're getting close. You start to get to that age of accountability. 
My 10 year old daughter, like I said, I'm gonna hold her accountable for my rent. Mm, no, because these are the things that stage three that I require. That's we don't learn to come to this point. Now, notice, go ahead, verse 13. Till I come, give attendance to reading, yes, sir, to exhortation, mm -hmm. to doctrine, mm -hmm. neglect not the gift that is mm -hmm. in thee, which was given thee by a prophecy with the laying on, on of the hands of the. Presbyterian. Presbyterian. That's the elders. Go ahead. Mediate upon. Meditate. So that, meditate. Sorry. Meditate upon these things. Yes. Give thyself only to them. Yes. That thy profiting may appear to all. Yes. Verse 16. Take heed unto thyself and unto the Dutch. Mm -hmm. Continue in them. See, we still continue, y'all. Right. Say, so you ain't stopped yet. Because you said you had it. You want to get to that eldership. You want to ride there? Look, look at the. I don't look how I done laid at the path of salvation for so many others. You don't reach that stage for? What are we talk about next week? But take heed unto thyself until the doctrine. No, continue in them. Go ahead. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear. Thee. Oh, so now we not only save thyself, but what them that what hear. That's what you do on that stage three. You able to hear, say them that felt in them that are hearing you. So now let's go to uh, 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 Second Timothy. No, let's go to uh, Joshua, Joshua one and one, because this is what the Lord had uh, jo uh, uh, Joshua do. Told him this is what you do, man. Have, you know what? Mm. <sighs> Yeah, let's go to hell. Because yeah. the salvation is so important yeah, to understand. Yeah. And this stage is critical, y'all. Like I said, each one of them is very important. Because yeah. at this point, man, you don't reach the Lord looking at you, man. You got some roadway in this book. And you're going to go and hide your tithes and your gifts. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk a little bit about that in the uh, in the dialogue table. But I, uh, Joshua, mm. one and uh, let's get right down to it. Uh, one and one. Because Joshua was Moses' minister. And Joshua had demonstrated. Sorry. Joshua had demonstrated. Joshua had demonstrated that he has enough spirit. That's how he get, that's how he made it out of the way. Joshua 1 and 1. Read. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass. That the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, uh -huh. Moses' minister, saying, Yes. Moses, my servant, is dead. Uh -huh. He's dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give them, even to the children of Israel. Now notice this is what he said about the first church, y'all. When it started in the wilderness. Go ahead. Every place that the sole of your foot shall to tread upon, that I ha that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Yes. From the wilderness and this. You know what? Let's skip down because he told him to do something here. Verse six. I'm looking at my time. Let's skip down to verse six. Verse six. Be strong and of a good courage. Yes. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swore unto their fathers mm -hmm. to give them. Mm -hmm. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou may observe observe to do according to the to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee mm -hmm. turn not from it to the right hand or to the left mm. that thou mayest prosper whither whithersoever thou goest mm -hmm. verse 8 this book of the law should not depart out out of thy mouth also oh, the first church dealt with book and so the church deal with book now okay but go ahead. This book of the law shall not depart out of my mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein what? Day and night. Go ahead. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Yes, sir. But then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Uh huh. And then thou shalt have good success. Uh huh. Verse 9. Have not I commanded thee? Mm. Be strong and of a good courage. No, see, I commanded thee to be strong and of a good courage. Go ahead. Be not afraid, uh, neither be thou dismayed. Yes, sir. For the Lord thy God is with thee 
Whithersoever thou goest. See, at this point, stage three, you know you ain't without a doubt. The Lord, that's why you're trying to save souls from that paganized Jesus and that Satanized Christianity and the high priests and all them chief priests. Trying to save them from that. I'm talking about side day keepers that need to be saved. Mm. Flat out. Save you from putting me on the table on the Passover. You need to be saved from that. That's under the old cup. But look, let's do ourselves a favor. Let's pursue this a little further. Let's go to 2 Timothy 2 and 16. That's a 2 and, two and 1. 2 Timothy 2 and 1. Because this third stage, like I said, every stage is just as necessary as the next one. Because people do need to be saved when? Now, people do need to learn what thus said the Lord when, starting when? Now, and you most definitely need somebody that understand the word of God what? Now, so you can make it to the end, right? Now, <laughs> okay, you need that. It's all important, y'all. It all lines up. Second Timothy 2, and start at 1. Now look what he told this Gentile. Second Timothy 2 and 1. Go ahead. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Yes, sir. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, mm -hmm. the same co commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. See, this is third stage salvation talk right here, y'all. Amen. Be what? Be strong. Don't be weak. Yes. In this, he said, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to what kind of men? Faithful. Because the ones that endure come to that stage too, they don't reach that accountability. These are faithful men. Yeah. Because we understand what's going down, y'all, in, in, in such a manner. We can't let the babies know. And look, they're running scared. I, I don't know. No, just look piece by piece. I thought it was bits and pieces in people's minds. But right here, look what this little Paul is telling Timothy. Though. Go ahead. Verse 3. Now therefore endure hardness. You got to endure what? Hardness. Because when you was a baby and you were just learning, you had that there. But guess what? It increases a little bit more once you start to strip with South Because Satan sees you as a threat. Mm, teach. He sees you as a problem. So now you got hardness. You got to endure hardness as a what? As a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You got there. Look. Let me, oh my God. You got to soldier up. Yes, sir. The soldiers are that uh, 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 stage three, y'all. Mm. Soldiers of Jesus Christ. That's why Paul said, put on the whole arm of God. You don't put on the arm because you're going out to a picnic. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Right. Soldier yeah. of Jesus Christ. Go ahead. No man that worth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, mm -hmm. that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. See, this is stage three. The Lord has chosen, he said, that we may please him that has chosen him to be a what? Soldier. That's why if you go through the military, mm. that's why I love my brother Philip. We, him, we, we right there. My brother, he's been through. We understand this, the, the diligence it takes to go through. We've been through this man's arm. Some of us. It's still in there, but nevertheless, the point is we understand the discipline it takes. Right. That's what's required at stage what? Three of salvation, y'all. Gotta put in our road work. It had chosen him to be a soldier and go ahead. And if a man also strives for for masteries. Mastery. Yes, sir. This is the stage three. That's what you was learning in stage two. You were striving for masters. You was look out, man. I remember I was in this book day and night, night and day, and I started seeing scriptures walk past me. I'm like, and I started seeing stuff on me that was in the book. Like, oh, oh, you start understanding how a man strives for mastery, yet he is not what? Yet is he not crowned, except he strives lawfully. See, this is how you get to stage three. You got to do it lawfully. Go ahead. 
Verse six: The husbandman that laboreth must be must be first partaker of the fruit. See, that's what you get in first stage one, y'all. I'm mean, stage two. You lay when you're getting them fruits. The Lord looking for the man. We read early. He looking for the fruits on the what tree. Amen. So you husband man that laborers must first be partakers of the fruits. You must come through stage two. The Lord let you know when you reach that uh, a stage three, and, uh, and you're held accountable. You are given an account for that. Go ahead. Consider what I say. Yes. And the Lord give thee understanding in all things. No, he said, consider what I say and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Remember, Lord, so I'm going to give you passages that shall feed you with knowledge and what? Understanding. That's what this stage three of salvation is about. Mm -hmm. Having the knowledge and understanding to feed the people. Go ahead. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead. According to my gospel. Mm -hmm. Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, mm -hmm. even unto bond. Mm -hmm. But the word of the but the word of, of God is not bound. Yeah, it's not copyrighted, in other words, but go ahead. Therefore I endure all things. See, see, at this point, you endure all things. Go ahead. For the elect's sake. Mm -hmm. That they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus. Yes, sir. Eternal glory. Yes, sir. It is a faithful saying. For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Mm -hmm. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. Mm -hmm. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Yes, sir. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Verse 14. Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they survive not. That they strive not. Sorry. That, that, that they strive not about words. To no profit. To no profit. Go ahead. But to the subverting of the hearer. Mm -hmm. Study to show thyself approved. Yes, sir. To God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh huh. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more, unto more ungodliness. Now let's go to First Corinthians. Uh, I mean, uh, Second Timothy four and eleven. Watch this, y'all. Look what he said about Luke. But once you reach the stage three, we're going to read 2 Timothy 4 and verse 11. We go to the fourth chapter. Read. Only Luke is with me. Mm -hmm. Take Mark uh -huh. and bring him with you. Uh -huh. For he is profitable to me for the ministry. And see, that's the key. You go to that stage two, you become what? Profitable for the what? Ministry. Amen. Ready to put in that work. You don't get to study it. You don't get to increase in you in the process of increasing that learning and spiritual understanding and knowledge. All of this are important in sustaining uh, uh in being in arriving at stage three. Now here's what I want to do. Let's go to Ephesians, uh for the move right along here. Uh let's go to Ezekiel 33. Because we sit back and when you're in stage two, you're learning. But once you come to this point right here, Ezekiel 33, thirty-three and one. Read. And again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people. Mm -hmm. And say unto them, when I bring the sword upon the land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watch, uh -huh. if when he sees the sword come come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. See, y'all, this is one of the responsibilities of accountability that at stage three, we ought to warn the people about God and the sword come through the land. Go ahead. Then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet, and take it not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own his own head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Verse five. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. You think we talking about a literal? No, we talking about opening up this buzz. Mm -hmm. Warn you with the words of God. Right. 
He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. Go ahead. His blood shall be upon him. Mm -hmm. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. Yes, sir. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet. That's how we call watches. Those the watch for our souls, y'all. The stage three salvation part. Go ahead. And the people be not warned. Mm. If the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. Mm. But his blood will I re require at the watchman's hand. See y'all, we, we this is accountability now. You see somebody that's doing something, you go straight up. How to save him from that? And if, you know, talk, look, bro, this what's up, man. Do what you want with it. But we just sit back there. Oh. If something happened, so as I said, each one of these are critical. Go ahead, verse 7. Verse 7, so thou, O son of man, as said thee, a watchman unto the house of Israel. Yes, sir. Therefore thou shalt hear the word of my mouth, and warn them from me. See, we got to go, that's why I said the fear of God, to serve him acceptably and with godly fear. Why? Because we got to warn you by God. He said, thou shalt Hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. Go ahead. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. See, we're trying to save him. Give him stage one. Come on, man. You need to come get this salvation. Because the book says salvation is what? Far from the wicked. So he said, when I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. Go ahead. If thou doest not speak to warn the wicked from his way, mm. That a wicked man shall die in his iniquity. Mm -hmm. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Yeah, y'all, this stage three is major. Major or major. Go ahead. Nevertheless, as thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, mm -hmm. he shall die in his iniquity. Yes, sir. So now let's go, moving right on, let's go now to uh, uh, 1 Timothy 3 and 1. I'm looking at the time. 1 Timothy 3 and 1. We we'll, we got a couple more verses, two more verses left, and uh, we'll be done. You didn't finish. Oh, I didn't finish. Go ahead, finish that. Yeah, finish that. I'm gonna move on. Expedition thirty-three, and we were at uh nah. Finish that. If he do not turn turn from his way, uh -huh. he shall die in his iniquity. Yes, sir. But thou hast delivered thy soul. See, nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it. If he do not turn away from his way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast what? Deliver that soul. Ain't that talking about salvation? Amen. So it's each level got salvation, y'all. Mm. Each level deals with salvation. So now let's go to uh, 1 Timothy 3 and 1. There was no bishop in the Old Testament, y'all. That's under the Levitical priesthood. Now we on the Melchizedek, y'all. 1 Timothy 3 and 1. And then we got one other verse, last verse after this. 1 Timothy 3 and 1. Just kind of tapping on the elders a little bit, but go ahead. This is our true saying. If a man desired the office of a bishop, mm -hmm. he desired the good work. Uh -huh. A bishop then must be blameless, mm -hmm. the husband of one wife. Yes, sir. Vigilant, mm. sober, mm. of good behavior, mm -hmm. given to hospitality, mm -hmm. a point to teach, apt to teach. Uh, apt to teach. How do you think he got to that point? Right. Learning, must learn, and going through experience. Learning and teaching the dirt word, get into this word, and give it to hospitality, apt to teach, good behavior. Go ahead, verse 3. I give it to one, mm -hmm. no striking. I mean, he ain't a brawl, he ain't gonna hit you. Now what you say, man? Now you gonna do that first. You might do that later, but anyway. They're not giving the wine, don't strike and not what? Not greedy or filthy looks. Uh-huh. But patient. Not a brawl. Not a brawl. Go ahead. Not covetous. Not covetous, go ahead. One that rules well his own house. Uh-huh. Having his children and subjection with all gravity. Yes, sir. For if a man knows not how to rule his own house. How shall he take care of the church of God? Now, if you look in your house, your own house, you can see this whole thing laid out, y'all. Mm. Especially if we just had a newborn baby like last year, two years ago. That was a baby now. Uh-oh, they started to walk. 
Oh, maybe you got a three-year-old now. Maybe they just now they just they learn in school. Oh, maybe you got someone that's like four or five. You see these stages. And as you see them in your own house, you're like, so the Lord is actually showing me the stages of salvation in my own house, especially those you got newborns. Or just had a baby, or maybe you got a 10-year-old or six-year-old. You can see these levels and stages show. That's why he said, if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? That's why I use those analogies. Because mm -hmm. all of us have been through, we all got a family, y'all. You know, you may have a two-year-old, man, somebody just had a baby, what? Last week. They got a newborn baby in their house. They sit back, man, look. Okay, maybe they got a teenager. Okay? All this is in the family structure as to, it relates to taking care of the church of God. Verse 6, go ahead. Not a novice. Oh, you can't be a st stage two, y'all. Can't be a novice. Mm, amen. Stage three, you got to be there. So not a novice. Go ahead. That being lifted up with pride, he fell into the condemnation of the dead. See, and that's what, so. That's why you got to wait for the Lord confirm you. You ready for stage three of this thing? You ready to deal with that accountability thing? Go ahead. More, he must have a good report of them which are. Without. Okay, and them the ones that's without the word. That's really what that's. More, you must have a good report of them which are without. Go ahead. That he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Likewise, must the deacons be grave, not double tongued, mm -hmm. not given to much wine, mm -hmm. not agreed of filthy looks, uh -huh. holding the mystery of the, of the faith and a pure conscience. No, it's holding the mystery of the faith in a what? Pure conscience. Not walking around to them. Oh, hope they're saved. No, you're trying to save souls. When? Now. Get them into that stage too. So they can grow up. And not be novices. And hell. Yeah. Okay? Go ahead. Verse 10. Verse 10. And let these also first be proved. See, let these also be what? First be what? Proved. How they get proved? That stage too. And a little bit of the stage too, because it's early on. That's how you give them a little bit. Can you handle a Bible study? Mm -hmm. Can you handle just, you know, expounding on some scriptures here? Can you can you handle a little thirty minute spot? Right there you go. Let me let me see how you bring uh, born again. How you, show me show me how you teach uh, being a little creature. Yeah, I, I, I just want to see fifteen minutes. Then you kind of creep. It must be what proved that you walk them up. That's why you got helps and. See if they're miracles, see if they're apostles, see if they're prophets. All that's as God said in the church. So they must first be proved. Go ahead. Then let them use the office of a deacon, being found blamed. Yes, sir. Even so much their wives be great. Not see? See, now he's taking them to the family left. What have you seen? Then you done. You are, you, it's, it's on plan. But the book is covering all the aspects. Why, even the wives. Go ahead. Even so much their wives be great, mm -hmm. not slender, sober, mm -hmm. faithful in all things. Yes. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, uh -huh. ruling their children and their own house, houses well. Yes, sir. For they that have used the office of a deacon will purchase to themselves a good degree mm -hmm. and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. Yes, sir. So now let's go to our last place, 1 Corinthians 9 and 1. And we done. First Corinthians, I know I'm going over a little bit, but First Corinthians 9 and 1, because this 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 third stage is really uh uh it was as critical as the, like I said, all of them equally serious, equally applicable, and equally necessary. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians 9 and 1. This is our, this our, first Corinthians ninth chapter and verse 1. This is our last one. Read. Am I not an apostle? That's how Paul is still bringing, he's putting this, his uh, uh, stage, actually, he put his stage three on the table. Am I not an apostle? I can say, am I not a teacher? Or you can say, the Lord will show you, are you not a prophet? Are you, look. He, so he said, am I not an apostle? Go ahead. Am I not free? Am I not free? I don't serve no man. We serve the Lord. Mm. He said, am I not free? Go ahead. Have I not seen Jesus Christ, our Lord? Mm -hmm. Are not ye my work in the Lord? See, so you have to put this work in, y'all. Right. 
Go ahead. If I be not an apostle unto others, mm -hmm. yet doubtless, I unto you. Because some people don't think Paul was an apostle even at that time. Paul said, be, if I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you. Just like some people think I ain't no teacher, but doubtless to y'all, I'm a what? Teacher. Anyone that's been in BCOG, you know what I work with. That's why Paul is putting his credentials. If I'm not being apostle of others, yet doubtless I am to you. Go ahead. For the seal of mine apostleship are ye in the Lord. Mm -hmm. My answer to them that do examine me in this, examine me is this. Mm -hmm. Have we not power to eat mm -hmm. and to drink? Mm -hmm. Have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as other apostles? And as the brethren of the Lord. And that's a fact. Same here. Have I not power to lead people about a sister or do I get in this word? Amen. That's why I'm held accountable, y'all. Lord, look at me. Like everybody else in, this, in the ministry, that is, they're like, well, we know the Lord look at dead that's square, because I'm in the accountability. I'm in the stage three, the accountable spot. And everyone that helps you, when you get your little spot, Lord hold you that once you're ready. Have a ride, brother, at stage what? Three. He's not going to do it to you before. But he's looking for you to get there. After three and a half years, mm. what did we read? Cut them off. That's why you got some false prophets. You got some brothers among the Saturday that's, dude, why are you teaching? Lord, don't cut them off. Now they want to be an enemy of God. We talk about Saturday kids. We ain't, you know, Sunday, him already, he, he went, yeah. Lord, I already got some words for him. Well, we just talking about them on Saturday, kids. So have I? Have we not power to lead about sister or wife as well as other apostles and as the brethren of the Lord and Caiaphas? Go ahead. Or I only and Barnabas have not we power to forbear work? See, have we not power to forbear working? This is what the Lord gave you at stage three mm. of salvation: the power of working, teaching, ministry. We saw the various offices. Go ahead. Who goeth the warfare any time at his own charge? So he said, who goeth a warfare any time at his own charge? I find the Lord will let you know when it's time for you to go forth and be assistance and help. He'll give you that accountability feeling. You'll be like, look, I got to drop this. Or I got to do this. Because he's going to show you that you've arrived at stage three of salvation. So who goeth a warfare any time at his what? Own charges. Go ahead. Who planted the a vineyard and eateth not of the fruit mm. thereof? Mm. Or who feedeth the flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock? Look, or who feedeth the what flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock? Go ahead. Say I these things as a man. He said, "Say these things." He said, "Say I these things as a man." Go ahead. Or saith not the law the same also? Oh, or saith not the law the same also? Go ahead. For it is written in the law of Moses. Mm. Why you say that? Because that's where the foundation of the church is. Mm. It's in the law. That's where we get our high days from, ain't it? Mm. We get thou shalt not from. The Lord even added more when he put a thousand fifty on the table with the New Testament. So, for it is written in the law of Moses. Go ahead. Thou, sh thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox mm. that treadeth out the corn. Mm. Does God take care for ox? Or said he it altogether for our sake? Mm. For our sakes, no doubt. No, he said for our sakes, no doubt. For who said? Stage three said. For our sakes. Go ahead. This is what? This is written. Mm -hmm. That he that plow plowed should plow in hope. Yes. And that he that thr thr threshes in hope. Should be partaker of his hope. Yes. It, verse eleven. If we have sown unto you, sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? Mm. Go ahead. If others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather? No. If others be partakers of this what power over you? This is when you get into stage three. Mm. Shall he said nevertheless what? Nevertheless, uh, we have not used this power, but what? We have not used this this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple? See, this is talking level one, three or stage one, three. 
Because it says, do you not know that they which what? Minister the holy things. Mm -hmm. Live other things under what? Temple. Go ahead. And they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar. Yes, sir. Even so have the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should, li should live of the gospel. See, they that live and preach the gospel should what? Live of the gospel. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I just want to leave it at this is stage three of salvation. I know I went over a little bit than usual, but this is so important to understand, especially for those of us that have heads of men uh, heading ministry. Okay, so with that being said, this concludes the stage three of salvation, y'all. Yeah. All right.